Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name's Shane and this is a Monster Inside, a free to play game that I found on Steam. I'm not entirely certain what to actually expect from it, it's an audio visual novella, apparently. So without further ado, let's get started. The Monster Inside, an audio visual novella by Random Seed Games. My head pounded, ears still ringing slightly. Some of the worst nightmares I'd had in years left me feeling like I'd been punched in the jaw, but just like any other day I dragged myself to the office. There was another notice on the door from Mayor Vinetti's office. Permits out of date. They didn't like me much. They were trying to drown me in paperwork. It was a slow month, weeks since I'd had any real case to work on. So I passed the time pacing the office, smoking and staring at the mirror in the corner, safely covered with an old bed sheet. I don't dare look at my own reflection. I'm too afraid of what I might see. Afraid someday I might have to face what I really am. The girl came in so quiet. I nearly choked on my cigarette. Girl. Mister, please, you gotta help me, mister. Okay, so now we have... Options. Of ways to go. I have to say, I really like the graphical style of this game. It's simple. Don't think there's anything I can click on in the. Nope, there isn't. Anyway, we have choices. Calm down now. Sit and talk slow. Yeah? What can I help you with? You ever hear a knocking first? I'm not sure what's going on with that accent then, but never mind. Uh, let's play this calm. Let's go with that one. Okay, thanks, it's just no one will listen to me. Just tell me your tale. I'm listening. She eyed me with just a dash of suspicion as I tossed back a hand full of pills and chased them with a swig of whiskey. I could tell this might take a while. Yeah, whiskey and pills, when you've just got a lady coming in who's needing your help. Not the best look, but very typical noir, so let's keep on going. Her name was Lily. She told me she was his mistress. The man all over the newspapers, the infamous banker, Mr. Reginald Farnsworth. Mr. Farnworth was a drunk, philandering bastard, but this girl seemed genuinely concerned that he had recently gone missing. Less concerned about the fact Mr. Farnsworth's wife had just turned up dead in Central Park two nights ago. Lily. I don't understand. He just couldn't have done it. He hated his wife. But he couldn't have killed her. Everyone thinks it was him, and no one believes me. He's got to be in trouble. I ain't saying I believe you, but what makes you think he's in danger? The case looks pretty simple. No, 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 no. We will, we will doubt all the facts until we have answers. Well, Mister. Hmm? Jack. You can just call me Jack. Lily. Lily. I shouldn't have said that so loud, never mind. Jack. Whoever did that to his wife must have been the one who took him. He would have never left without me. He promised me. Oh, sweetheart. They all say that. I'm sure Mr. Farms would promise this poor girl a lot of things. 
please, the cops won't listen to me. And they want to bring him in on charges. You gotta prove it wasn't him before they find him. Honestly, I doubt they're in too much of a hurry. Farnsworth had practically the entire police force in his deep pockets. Probably why they hadn't found him yet. Uh, found him much yet. If they found him and brought him in, it would be due to public pressure. Sometimes a mob with pitchforks is more dangerous than one man with money. You've got my curiosity, but you might not like what I find. I can help you, we'll get to the bottom of this. No, I'm going to be honest with you because this might not be good. Oh, thank you, mister. Jack, thank you. Please, be careful. I don't think this was just another murder or kidnapper. I think it... I think it was a... A beast. Hmm. Beast. The word struck me funny. Like when you jaw an L... When you jar your elbow on a hard corner. Not a word many use these days, except in hush whispers and bedtime stories for children. Oh, they were real enough, all right. They just got better at hiding, controlling their unseemly urges. But I hadn't had any, si but I hadn't seen any monsters in nearly fifteen years. Back when I was still a cop myself. Well. That's definitely an interesting theory. I can help you. We'll get to the bottom of it. Don't you worry now. Leave the detective work to me. Let's not jump to any conclusions here. Uh, we'll go with the middle one. And you seem like the kind of man who's good at solving mysteries. Sure. Can't you see how busy I am with cases? I replied a little too harshly, sarcasm bottom my strong suit. I reassured, I reassured her some more and sent her on her way. I didn't want to scare her, but I warned her before she left to keep her doors locked and called me if she saw anything suspicious. I didn't know if she was in danger herself, but better safe than sorry. That night, I made my way down to Central Park. It was a long shot, but maybe there was something there the cops had missed. End of chapter one. Okay, so far this has got my interest. Um, we're only about 20 minutes into the episode. So, I'm going to continue. I might see if we can do two chapters per episode. So let's go... The scene was already picked clean by the cops days ago, but I've got a knack for finding the things others overlook. A knack, more of a symptom of a condition, other less useful symptoms I kept in check. But for the time being, my keen sense of smell would come in handy. It was faint, but I could smell it before I even approached the police line. The scent was less of a thing and more of an emotion. Seduction. A strangely familiar smell. I expected the scent of trepidation or maybe even outright fear. But Mrs. Farnsworth seemed to have been at the height of pleasure when she left this world. Brought new meaning to the crime of passion. Pushing the thought from my mind, it was time to get down to business. Investigate the scene. Ah, so we've got some pointy clicky stuff to do. That's good.
Muddy footprints everywhere, difficult to pick out anything from the prints the cops left behind in their haste. But cops don't wear $2,000 pairs of kakinos. It looked like Mr. Farnsworth was there last night and walked away on his own two feet. Little bit of pixel hunting. Ooh, hello. A burn mark on a nearby tree caught my eye. I ran my finger along its length and felt a chill down my spine. This wasn't just any burn mark. This was the mark of an ancient magic. It's doubtful the cops would have picked up on it. Could Lily have been right? Something unnatural was at play here. But I was no stranger to the strange. After looking around for a while longer, I realised the park had given up all it was hiding from me. So I trudged back to my apartment. My head hit the pillow like it owed me money. Alright, let's continue with, a mu with the monster inside. The next morning I was reeling from another bout of ghoulish nightmares. But I tried to hide my discomfort when I saw Lily was already sitting outside the office. She waited wordlessly as I unlocked the door and ripped down another notice from the mayor's office. I motioned for her to step inside, seemingly afraid of what I might say. She finally worked up the courage to ask. So, what did you find? Well, I've got some good news. Farnsworth might still be alive. Not sure about beasts, but something unnatural was at play. Might be right to worry about monsters. Found a spell's mark. Um. Let's give her the good news. I probably shouldn't have given her false hope like that. But she seemed like she needed something to hold on to right then. She didn't need to know about the mark on the tree. How do you know that? Where is he? Found his footprints. Seems like he got out safely. There were signs he was at the scene and slipped away. Let's go with that one. My tone was indifferent towards her as I turned and grabbed a bottle from my desk drawer. The dryness in my throat made it difficult to swallow my meds. But you don't know where he went? Do you think that the news this morning is related? What news? <laughs> what news is that? Haven't you heard? Nope. Rough night followed by a rough morning. They found the police chief's wife dead down by the docks. They say it happened last night. Let me guess. Chief Amado is missing too? My face might have been betrayed. Might have betrayed a hint of satisfaction if she confirmed my suspicions. But it faded quickly. Amado was a shit cop and a shit chief. It was half the reason I left the force, but now his wife was dead, and I had more questions than I did the day before. The gears in my head started to spin, which wasn't helped by the splitting pain of my temples. I told Lily I needed time to work, and she left slightly dejected, wanting more answers than I could provide. That night, after the cops had cleared out of the docks, I would slip down and see where I could uncover, concerning Miss Sisamato's untimely demise. Let's move on to chapter 3. The cold air smelled strongly of salt and oil and... Could it be? That smell again, like someone had bottled pure arousal and use it as perfume. 
It hit me like a long forgotten memory, but the sensual fumes soon gave way to a rush of adrenaline. I knew exactly what the scent reminded me of, and that scared me more than not knowing. I looked down at my hands, shaking. The nightmares, the headaches. No, I was better now, reformed. I had to focus, no jump to conclusions, follow the evidence. Okay, so we have two things to click on again. Let's go. There, just there, the smallest piece of purple fabric torn and caught in the splinter of a board. The police report didn't say anything about Mrs. Amato wearing purple, and it was certainly of a quality that you wouldn't expect down here. Don't see too many high society types around flaunting royal purple threads. Interesting. Red Phoenix cigarettes. Same shitty brand I smoke every day. Everyone's got their vice. Pulled out my own pack of rags and lit up. I could already feel another headache coming on. But looking out over the waves seemed to help me forget. The cold helped me push down the uncomfortable thoughts that had been bubbling to the top of my brain. I honestly don't remember the walk back to the office. Apparently I spent the night in my easy chair. The air from the docks lingered on my clothes. It was still dark out. No, I checked the clock. How long had I been out? Had I really slept through the entire next day? A newspaper was sitting under my door. As I stood to fetch it, I nearly fell over. A wave of nausea hit me like a ton of bricks. I steadied myself and regained my composure. Before I even picked up the paper, I could already read the headline. Breaking, Mayor missing, wife found dead. Two cases is a coincidence, three is a pattern. The cops would come asking questions soon. They knew I had a history of antagonising all of the victims. I stumbled to my desk and slammed back three days worth of inhibitor pills. I couldn't take any chances. I had to investigate the scene to be sure. Threw on my jacket and went to the door. Lily caught me off guard on the other side. Jack, where are you off to? I've been trying to reach you all day. I'm sorry, Lily. I don't have time to talk. I have to go. Yeah, I've just been busy. I'm off to Mrs. Vinetta's... Vinetti's? Vinetti's. Crime scene. Um, I'm going to be up front with this lady, I think. Well, kind of up front. Both of those were kind of dodging. Okay, but we need to talk when you get back. Stay safe. Ah, uh, that's a red flag right there. I'm not sure if Lily is going to make it. She gave me a soft kiss on the cheek as I rushed off. Part of me wanted to stay and tell her it would be okay. But it would be a lie. We are really flying through these chapters. I'm pretty certain on the Steam page it said there was only um, seven chapters, maybe? Anyway, let's keep on going. Hmm. Interesting music. The alley was located just behind the high-rise apartments where Mayor Vinetti and his wife lived. I could tell the police were spooked now. The crime scene was even sloppier than the last. 
they hadn't even bothered to submit the trash into evidence. What else do we have? So we're following a pattern. Every investigation scene, we have two things to click on. Let's go for the car first. Vinetti's car. If he's still alive, why wouldn't he have left in his car? Didn't make any sense. I honestly wasn't too motivated to find him, but the stakes were too high. And my bet was edging towards the unthinkable. Why wouldn't they at least look through the dumpster? It seemed untouched. No one wanted to do the dirty work. But I know how to find the good stuff. It really doesn't take long if you know what to look for. Lightweight bags usually mean someone was dumping documents. If you were lucky, they didn't bother to shred them. Jackpot. Shell companies, shady stock trades, bribes. I knew Mayor Vanetti was crooked, but this was unbelievable. And there was more. Letters between Ven uh, Mayor Vanetti and Chief Amado. Talking about me. How they were trying to get me shut down. They didn't like me snooping around crime scenes all the time. Well, they weren't here to stop me snooping around this one. As I searched around for anything that might assuage my fears, I caught the scent again. It overwhelmed my other senses with undulating pleasure. It was intoxicating, a weapon used on the weak willed, a weapon I knew all too well, though it had been many years since I had used it. Was there another like me? Was I being framed? It wasn't possible, was it? I was taking my inhibitors, I was reformed. But the nightmares, the headaches, the memory lapses. I couldn't even trust myself. I started walking back out of the alley when something shiny caught my eye. A watch. Not just any watch though. My watch. How long had my wrist been bare? Surely I just dropped it when I first came down the alley. I checked the time just before I left the office, hadn't I? Or had I used the wall clock? I couldn't be sure. I couldn't be sure of anything. So I ran. So, are we being framed? I mean, the monster inside is kind of pointing but a bit like Lily giving you a soft kiss goodbye this could all be a a load of misleads red herrings as they say let's continue I don't know why I ran back to the office the cops would probably show up any minute to knock the door down and carry me away they would put it together before long Maybe it would be best for everyone if I simply faced my own reflection. But Lily was still there, waiting for me. Oh, well, at least she ain't dead. Jack, what's wrong? You look like you've seen a ghost. My own ghost, come back to haunt me from the past. You're not making any sense, Jack. Come sit down. You don't understand. You're not safe around me. I took a good long look, long last look at her, last look, yeah, whatever. I took a good last look at her as I prepared to shove her out of the door. I noticed she was wearing the same thing she had when she first came to my office three days ago. A beautiful purple dress. Odd that I hadn't really noticed before. It made her seem out of place, out of time. And it was frayed around the edges, torn in places. 
My chair caught my fall as my knees failed me. It was you. You're the monster. Succubus. Oh, Jack. We are one and the same, you and I. We are both monsters. I'm simply more honest with myself. There's no such thing as reformation. Those pills you'll take only make you dull. Beasts like us should never be should never suppress our true natures, as you have, Incubus. Those men were probably dead too now, I figured. She probably took them to her lair and harvested their seed. So, you've done all this just to wake me up? You could say that. It seemed enough just to leave you doubt, to have you doubt yourself. You'd believe you were still capable of such horrors, which means deep down you probably are. You can't escape it. Now I need you to complete the deed. You took my watch, messed with my head. Oh, don't like, don't act like I didn't do you a favor. Those men hated you and wanted you gone, and now they are gone. I mustered the strength to stand again, moving casually to the window by the corner. She was right about one thing, I was dull, weak, compared to her. If I refused her, and she attacked me, I was a dead man. I had to keep her talking. I've never met a succubus who seduced and killed women. Oh, please. Such a 14th century stereotype. I don't discriminate when it comes to the pleasures of the flesh. But I do still need an incubus like yourself to take the tainted seed I've harvested from those awful men and plant it along the fertile masses for me. Interesting. They're tired of drain I'm tired of draining my lovers just to survive. I'm ready to settle down and start a family. <laughs> the laugh text is just weird. That maniacal laughter. I positioned myself carefully, making sure she was looking in my direction. Sorry, but I'm not your guy. With a quick flick of my wrist, I whipped the old bedsheet off the corner mirror. Lily was blinded by her own reflection and sucked into the mirror with a painful, monstrous scream, trapped. Shielding my own eyes, I pulled a revolver from my desk. My desk side drawer, aimed it at the mirror, and fired. Huh. That was short and sweet and had a nice twist. Yeah, that that wasn't a bad little I wanna say game, but having two clickable areas per thing and now it, it was right to call this a an interactive audio visual novel. Yeah, I enjoyed that. I hope you have too. My name's been Shane, and I will return later with something else. We might have to look into some of the other games. And what do we have? Lacuna Passage. Explore the vast terrains of Mars, generated from real NASA. No. Anyway, I will see you all next time.